Oh, sugar honey iced tea. It's the EAC show. Good day, ladies and gents. I'm Emilio A. Cologne, and joining me today on episode 115 of the EAC show, we got our friend of the show, our lovable loser, LaVon Harvey. LaVon, appreciate you joining us on the EAC show. What's going on, man? Nothing much, man. Just out here, just chilling, uh, making it do what it do, man. Thanks for having me again, though. Of course, it. always a pleasure to have you on. LaVon, listen, since the last time we spoke, we touched a little bit about on the NFC game and the AFC championship game between the Green Bay Packers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers mm -hmm. ended up winning that to go to the Super Bowl. We also discussed the AFC championship game between the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs with the Kansas City Chiefs going forward in that game. Um, LaVon, we're going to tackle a few things here and there about the big game. I really want to leave that towards the end of the show. We got a lot of sports that's going on. You got NBA, you got NHL, you got Major League Baseball also with their situation and whether they're going to start on time. Just touch on it a little bit, LaVon. I mean, I know how you feel. I know you're a baseball fan. I know you watch some of it as well. Tell me how you feel about a little bit about the back and forth. Are you on the side of the players or are you on the side of the owners? Do you think that the players should give in to what the owners want, which is a shortened season and longer playoffs? Or do you feel like, Man, the owners want too much. I'm on the side of the players. I mean, end of the day, I mean, I'm I'm all for the players, end of the day. But we know who we know who runs this show. I mean, the players kind of do, but if they want to get paid and they want it and they want shit to shake, I mean the, the owners are gonna get what they want, plain and simple. So that that's just what's gonna happen. Um, um, it is what it is. We can we can we can debate, talk about all we want. If that's what they want, because, again, these guys are billionaires, right? End of the day, they got here by doing it their way. So they're going to get what they want, right? This is what? How many MLB teams? 30-something? 30, 30 yeah. Yeah, these are 30. These, and then th these are these are their, their toys. You know what I'm saying? If this is gonna, they're going to get what they want when it's all said and done. So that's my take on it. So in all actuality, I had this discussion earlier, and I, I have a tendency of getting a lot of information when it comes to athletes. I keep a lot of it inside – and I ask them what I can use and what I can't use. And in this instance, one of the athletes had told me, out of the four major sports in all of sports, Major League Baseball is the most disconnected with their commissioner and with their owners. They're so far apart, it's not even funny. It, mm. It's like, literally, it's like, we say one thing, they want another, and we never actually meet in the middle. It just gets down to a point where we have no other choice but to do it to the betterment of the game. So in my opinion, I really do feel like that the owners are using bullying tactics and they have a commissioner that sides on their side because the commissioners actually paid from the owners, not the players. So yes. in all actuality, I feel like the Major League Baseball is literally bullying the hell out of these players, using health and safety as an excuse to try and sit there and get shortened games, longer playoffs, which gives more money to the owners at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yep, 100%. Like I said, it's all about the mighty dollar. And and what you what you said is totally true, and that's kind of what I wanted to to spit out, but I couldn't. Right? These 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 owners are paying the salary um, of the top dog in the league, so that's what it kind of boils down to. And I mean, and, and it, unfortunately, it is what it is. And it's funny you mentioned the, the voice of the, the athletes. Baseball is last on that list, right? As far as the voice of the athlete, basketball. It, it you used are, to be. It used to have the strongest union out of all the sports, LeVon. I, ever since Tony Clark took over, I don't know what the hell happened. It's been awful. Like, it's just... Yeah. Uh, those guys have been on mute, right? NBA's, I mean, clear number one. I mean, it's Clear number one right. togetherness is the NBA. The NBA with their Players Association, the Correct. owners, and the commissioner all one yeah. cohesive. On the, same, on the same accord. Correct. And then, of course, you got the NFL. I mean, that's just... A little disconnect between Roger Goodell, but they bit, get it done. But then again, Roger Goodell's, hey, I, I, I'm here with you guys, but we still got to – he's kind of playing both sides, and, and that's okay, right? Because the NFL is the number one sport. that and NFL is top dog, so they, they've got to give and take, right? But then MLB, I mean, that's just – I mean, I hate I to say it, it's almost like modern day slavery if you think about it. It's just like, yo, y'all going to do what we want, or y'all not motherfucking playing at all. That's the way they feel. That's it. So, I mean, that's unfortunate, but that is what it is. That's what it is right now. They need to make the, – the change needs to come, so. I don't want to stay on this topic too much longer because this is going to be a big, big Super Bowl show. But 
I did find out or I did know that the reason real reason why the shortened season was uh, rejected was because the players felt like that the owners went behind their back to discuss broadcasting uh, money with television networks on expanded mm-hmm. playoffs and didn't speak to them first. Literally, they went and they got a deal and they were like, oh, this is what it's going to be. And the players were like, wait a minute, we didn't even agree to play those extra games. So what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Cold game, man. Cold game. Filthy, 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 filthy. So getting into the NFL, which is this is this is Super Bowl week. We have to talk about NFL news before we get into the big game, before we get into the Super Bowl that's being held in Raymond James Stadium. First time ever in history that a uh, home team will be playing the Super Bowl at home. Uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let's talk about some of the stuff that happened and some of the stuff that hasn't happened yet. So obviously some of the stuff that happened, uh, LeVon, is Matthew Stafford being traded real, real, from the... I'm sorry, Mila, real quick. We're not going to talk about Corsair Karen? Or are we just going to gonna breeze the over Corsair, that? Yo, the Corsair Karen shit was dope. I'm not going to lie. It was dope. <laughs> Listen, I'm not mad at homegirl stepping up for her man, but it all actually... You got that much muscles and you that fucking big, homie. You don't have to have your wife talk for you, okay? I don't give a fuck how tall LeBron James is. You pumping yourself full of HGH, all that other shit. Little, stand up on your own. Let it, you speak for yourself. You don't have to have wifey. Let wifey be pretty in her little trophy shit. Yo, look good in your YSL shoes. I saw you, shorty. You were doing your thing. But, yo, stay, you that big, homie. Stand up and defend yourself. Yo, you could see she wasn't having it. She was like, well, you ain't nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hey, it slipped my mind. I totally forgot about it. I was having a quick conversation with some friends. Yo, know, one side was saying, "Yo, did that kind of give her a clout, or did it not give her a clout?" I said, "It did give her a clout, in my opinion. I mean, she was a talk of the, the next day. She was. I mean, it was slow. It was a slow day in sports, but she was all over everything. Social media, the clip over and over again. How does it not? I mean, she was up there, stood on her ten toes, like, "What's up? No, you're not about to do that, right?" Yeah, so, I mean, shout out to her. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters to her is her husband's eyes, and that's all that matters. She don't give a fuck about LeBron James, Anthony Davis, none of them motherfuckers. 15 minutes, you feel me? I mean, I'm not going to get into, of course, everyone starts to delve into her social media, who she is, and, and you know, but she did issue, She did issue an apology. She did issue an apology. It was a real nice apology, too. It was well put together, so shout out to her. Yo, listen, her name is Juliana Carlos, if I'm not mistaken. Juliana okay. Carlos is her name. And her husband is some rich guy from ATL or whatever it may be. So shout out Correct. to them as well. But in all actuality, look, I, that shit slipped my mind without question. Real talk. Yeah, I, just, I'm like, Wait, what, 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 Anyways, I, yeah. my, I totally forgot about that. That slipped my mind. But back to the NFL stuff so we can talk about the, 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 the game that matters the most uh, this year. We're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about trades that didn't happen and trades that did happen. So this is one of the trades that happened so far. We got Matthew Stafford going from the Detroit Lions to the L.A. Rams for golf. Uh, Jared Goff and a bunch of picks. I want to hear your opinion on who you're going to think is going to end up winning this trade. Not who won the trade. Who is going to win the trade in the long run, LeVon? In the long run? I mean, Matt Stafford is very talented. He, he's got a big arm. He throws for yards. He's uh he did have a Megatron for a while, Marvin Jones. Uh, he had Hawkinson as a tight end, but I just feel like Matt Stafford is Matt Stafford. Um, to be honest with you, but I heard the trade go down, and I said, "Well, was it a, was it um well I'm sure it was probably just straight up trade." I, I didn't know the details of it though. That's what I thought it was. I thought it was a straight up trade, but then I I look at all the details. I'm like, "Oh, is Matt Stafford like Patrick Mahomes?" I was kind of shout out to was, shout out to the goat, the godfather of contracts and all types of shit in, in the NFL, Michael Lombardi. And if you haven't listened to his podcast, definitely listen to it. The GM uh, Shuffle Pod, he writes for the Athletic as well. He he basically broke it down the best way, and this is the way I could break it down to you. The Lions got pieces in return, got golf, but they only really traded for golf's contract. So they, mm-hmm. they loaded golf's contract onto them and got pieces in return. And the only thing they had to send back the other way was somebody that already didn't want to be there in the first place. So they literally sent Stafford to the Rams, and the Rams ended up saying Goff and his contract, which the Lions didn't have a problem absorbing this year. Next year, they'll figure it out. If he's good enough, he you know he can keep earning his salary. If not, they'll figure out a way to get him out of there. 
and they have draft picks, and not to mention they were awful this year, so they can also draft as well. So, in my opinion, it was literally not – anybody would trade for Jared Goff. It's not about trading for Jared Goff, and this is what he explained. He said that they traded for his actual contract. Yes. The ability okay. to have a player come in to help them, and if he does well, great. And if he doesn't, yo, you're out the door. Correct, correct. I know I, I was hearing rumbles that they felt that they were kind of stuck with his contract before he even got traded. Right. And and if you heard some of the comments from the owner and, and, and the coach, it, it was finicky. Like, you know, he's our guy for now. Like these quarterbacks hear that stuff. Right, right, he's, right. And you know, you know, right now he's a Ram. Like, that's not get out of there. Get out of there, Jared. Right. So it may both sides are happy. That's cool. I, I don't I, I don't think it's that huge of a difference, in my opinion. To be honest, I think Matt's a little better. I, it's like to me, it's like 52 48. I don't, you know, I don't I think feel it's like that. Matt's a lot much, be, a, a lot better. And I feel like that that makes a huge difference in that NFC uh, West division where Seattle normally wins the division. I think in all actuality, now the Rams are always going to win the division because Matthew Stafford is a really, really good quarterback. Um, there's been some rumblings about uh, Andrew Luck coming back into the NFL. Uh, there was, I don't know if you saw it, there was a bunch of release no. text messages. You can look no. it up after the show. There's a bunch of released text messages from a friend of the wife. Uh, and she basically was saying that, you know what, that Andrew Luck is actually meeting with Jim Ursay to discuss him coming back because he misses the sport so much. I'm a big Andrew Luck fan. I'm a huge fan of Andrew Luck. If he ends up going back to Indianapolis Colts, so happy for him and them. What a well-ran organization. And uh, Andrew Luck is a perfect fit at Indianapolis because they already had him there. I think this time around, their offensive line is one of the best. Their defense is good. So if Andrew comes back and plays for them, that would be amazing. Oh, man. I, I did not hear these rumbles, but that would be amazing. That would be fun. I loved watching Andrew Luck play, man. I thought he was awesome. Of course, he left because, um, you know, there's life beyond football. He was getting hit a lot. Yes. As, as such a talented NFL player, quarterback, you know, it's, it's, more, it's more so my health is more important. He's a smart guy. He's already paid. I'm just going to leave the, leave the game. But if he comes back, and it makes perfect sense, too, because guess what? You know, old Phillip Rivers, is, he's done. He's, it's over, right? So so who's next, right? They, I'm sure they've probably, you know, we're looking at Wentz or looking at whoever. But if they can get Andrew Luck back to the team, um, that'd be awesome, man. And, and, and hopefully this time he can, you know, just tough it out. Um, and this line could keep him, um, uh, you know, standing straight. So. That'd be awesome, man. If that's the case, I, I, I'd, be, I'd be huge. I'd be excited. So let's, for that. let's discuss the, the, the main guy, the main, the main prize right now. He's not a free agent. He's actually signed for a lot of years. But the guy that wants out of Houston, and we're going to talk about Deshaun Watson. Deshaun has said his, his agents have, you know, told Adam Scheffler repeatedly how much they want out of Houston. They want nothing to do with the Houston Texans whatsoever. Deshaun is listed as going all over. People are checking in. This The GM, the brand-new GM and the brand-new head coach of Houston, Texas, have sat there and said that the reason why they signed on to do this job in Houston is because Deshaun Watson is the quarterback of this team. Uh, Nick Casario, who's the GM, has come out and said that he will literally, you know, make sure that Deshaun Watson is with them in the spring, that they have no interest in trading this player at all. <laughs> LeVar, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't matter what they have interest in. If the guy's not going to throw a football, if he's not going to step on that field, it's not happening. Uh, and from what I'm hearing, you know, between um, the, his agent and, and Watson, is he's not going – he'd rather sit out the entire year than play for these guys again. That's what I heard, right? He'd yeah. rather sit out the entire year and not play than play for these guys again, right? Yeah, he signed a contract. People are saying he should fulfill his contract obligations, yada, yada, yada. But at the same time, you don't know what's been going on behind closed doors because supposedly they made promises that they haven't fulfilled to him either, Correct. right? So, and then we, we see what the wave is nowadays with, 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 um, with the players, you know, speaking up, having a voice. So, you know, it's not going to happen. I, from what I've heard, like, it's, go, you let him go, get what you need to get because he prefer to sit out a year. And we've seen players do this before. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to play for you. I'm, I'm, I'm legit holding out. Yvonne, I'm going to take the other side on this. What the fuck is the GM supposed to say? The best player on the team wants out. What is the GM supposed to say? He's supposed to say, okay, yeah, look, we're going to do our best to accommodate 
uh, Deshaun as much as possible. Every team in the world is going to give you dog shit if they know that. Exactly. So, I mean, that, that, that's the only thing he can say, unfortunately, at this time. And I'm sure, you know, behind the scenes, he's trying to figure out what he can do. He's not going to get anything equivalent to a Deshaun Watson, right? People, this is what you hope for in a quarterback, right? A Deshaun Watson. But unfortunately, he doesn't want to be there. So it's like, hey, I need this, this, this. No, no I'll give you half of that. He doesn't want to be that, there. So take that. Da- Dabo said it best. Dabo said, hey, listen, when you pass him up, you're passing up on Michael Jordan. That's how Dabo yeah. felt about Deshaun. The key question, and now I'm going to ask you, where do you think he's going to end up if he does end up getting traded? For me, in all actuality, it's very rare that teams normally trade in conference, meaning like you don't mm-hmm. normally see players never. getting traded from AFC to AFC. Never, never. So, I mean, so what? So are you hearing somebody that <laughs> a team in that conference? I'm just trying to do simple math. Like, let's just be honest. Okay. Deshaun, in my opinion, in my opinion, has to end up on some type of an NFC team. Name shitty NFC teams, Levon, that have high draft picks, the money to absorb Deshaun. Like, you tell me. Like, only one that I can really think of, the only one that I can really think of, there's two, actually. Number one is the Washington football team. Correct. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. It's the Washington football team. That's the only one that I really can think of that comes to my mind. This one is on some fantasy football talk type shit. And it's literally, if you cannot sign Dak Prescott, you trade for Deshaun Watson. I, I didn't, I, that didn't even cross my mind. Um, I, Redskins is the first, the first team on the list. No question about it. It, just, it makes sense, right? Um, but, you know, I, I've heard rumble. You know, you hear trades from every single team. He's been Dolphins, just flirting with Dolphins, flirting with the Jets as well. Again, those are two AFC teams, though. Um, but so are the Raiders. So I heard what the Raiders. What was the last trade that you remember off the top of your head that was AFC to AFC or NFC to NFC? It was it was homie from Calais Campbell from from um, Jacksonville to yeah to yeah. Baltimore. Uh, it yeah, rarely I, happens. Yeah, I I can't uh, right now off the top of my head I can't think of anything, but um. Yeah, it does. It doesn't happen, right? These guys want to. These these guys want to get these quarterbacks as far away as possible. We'll see you in the Super Bowl or once every five years. That's yeah. the mentality. You said it. You said it best. We'll see you That's in the it. Super Bowl, or we'll see you once. We'll see. No, first we'll see you in preseason. We'll see you in preseason because you know they sometimes they play in preseason. Yeah. So we we'll see you in preseason. We we'll see you in the Super Bowl, or we we'll see you once every five years. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That they're good. You know what I mean? It's, it's not happening. I'm mean, even even the trash quarterbacks. They're like, nah, you can. You can have that. You know what I mean? What? 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 Did, where did uh, Redskins quarterback go? What's his name? Where did, where did he go? Uh, oh, Haskins. Uh, he went to Pittsburgh. Pittsburghs. <laughs> hey, that's not a big deal. <laughs> so so here's, here it is. So in my opinion, I'm going to sit there and say there's three teams that Deshaun Watson could get traded to. This is just my opinion. First, Washington football team. Second, San Francisco 49ers. Third. If the Dallas Cowboys don't re-sign Dak Prescott, who just came off an injury, you do everything in your power to trade for Deshaun Watson and you turn the other way on Dak Prescott and let somebody else worry about that. I don't think, my personal opinion, I don't see Deshaun getting traded from AFC to AFC unless the Jets or unless Jacksonville just give everything Houston wants in draft compensation or whatever it may be. I've heard, I mean... Now, I'm, I, what I've heard is in you know in, in in Oakland, you know Chucky he respects Carr. He, he thinks he's cool, but he has no problem, you know, parting ways with Carr. So, I mean, think about it. And you think it's a lot on paper. Like, gosh, draft picks, Carr, and Darren Waller, who's I said considered the third, maybe the third best tight end in the league. Fourth, there's the third. I say third behind Kittle and and Kelsey. And maybe I'm forgetting somebody else. But, um, I mean, Carr, Waller, and a pick or some picks or whatever for – I mean, how can you as, – as, as, as a Houston Texan, you're not going to get much. How do, you deny, how do you let go of that – how do you not accept that trade? I mean, just because it's in the AFC. That's the, I'm telling you, I'm just, that's just how I feel. I just feel like you can't 
There's no way on God's green earth you're going to sit there and send this guy in the same conference unit that you have to face him if you're actually good. I know, but low key, that'll put Houston in a good spot because Houston doesn't have a tight end. They got bums at tight end. Now you have Waller. You have um, a serviceable quarterback in Carr. And then you also have, you still have two solid receivers, Cooks and, 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 and uh, 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 steroids, whatever his name is. I forgot his name, right? Listen, I just feel like, in my personal opinion, number one spot for him to go to would actually be the Washington football team because they have <laughs> what they have what to send Houston what they want in return. That's number one for me. Number two, in my opinion, would be the San Francisco 49ers. I can 100% see Deshaun Watson in the NFC playing with the San Francisco 49ers. That would legitimately be the best division in football because you have – Russell Wilson playing in Seattle, Matthew Stafford playing in L.A., you got uh, Kyler Murray playing in Arizona, and Deshaun Watson would be in San Francisco. Hands down, everybody would be watching 4 o'clock games, NFC West, exciting, yeah. ridiculous football. Your quarterback anyways, you know what I'm saying? Send him, send him back to New England. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy G, Band-Aid, Band-Aid Jimmy G real quick. Listen. Yeah. Oh, before I get into that, because now I want to get into the uh, to the Super Bowl, uh, LeVon, there's a couple of people coming out and they're sitting there and they're asking questions about the whole, you know, Brady and Belichick situation and this, then, and third. And I heard a couple things. I heard what Danny Amendola said that, like, every year the Patriot way is basically like, look, you need to come in. You need to take a pay cut. You need to do what's best for the team. We ask Tom to take pay cuts. He takes pay cuts. So, like, this is just something to do in order to continue growing and, and, and winning championships here in New England, the Patriots way. Uh, Akib Tlaib came out today and said, look, you got to understand, in New England, it's, that's just the way it is. You know what I'm saying? It's just, that's just the way they do business. And if you don't like it, no problem. They'll send you somewhere else. It's no big deal. Belichick has literally gotten rid of almost Hall of Famers, you know what I'm saying, because they can't come to an agreement on things. And he just literally just plugs and play. Aren't you tired of hearing the whole Belichick can't win Super Bowls or championships without Brady and Brady can't win Super Bowls? Like, are you like, are you fed up with that conversation? It's been debated like over and over and over again. I understand the initial conversation. It, it you know, it makes sense to talk about it initially. It does, right? And it's going to be talked about this entire week. It's going to be running to the ground. I get it, but after a while, you're right. It's just like, bro, it is what it is, right? Let, let's just appreciate the last two decades of what they did for us or what they did together, right? And let's just l l leave it be, right? Now, now let's keep let's let's keep it a buck. Amendola, Tlaib, all these guys going on these world tours right now, talking about Bella, the the New England way. It's a real thing. I mean, think about it. Even reportedly, New England was possibly looking to get Matt Stafford. He said, "Look, I'll go anywhere. I do not want to go to New England." <laughs> Don't say Look, so that shows you, like, I don't care if you're the GOAT quarter, uh, coach of, of all time. I've heard enough. Uh, these guys ain't lying either. They're all saying the same thing. I'm good, right? But, you know. Not for nothing. I saw I, I saw that, too. And it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because uh, Tlaib, he, he, he touched on that a little bit. And he said that how, you know, sometimes you see people and they say things like that. And quarterbacks, you know, they we talk talking about 15 elite quarterbacks, 10 elite quarterbacks in NFL out of 30 positions, you know, out of 30 – you know, quarterback positions in the league. He goes, you, that shit is hella hard. Like, real talk, it's really hard. So imagine being a, an elite quarterback in the league and it's really, really hard to do that. And you got to do it in New England with Bill Belichick where he checks everybody. Accountability is the number one uh, thing on his plate. He don't care if you are the star, superstar, nope. Hall of Fame quarterback or you're the special teams guy. He is checking everybody. Yep. Yep. So I, so I guess Brandon Cooks put it best, like, Yo, Brandon Cook said, look, when you're in New England, people would be like, yo, I don't want to go to New England. I don't like New England. You don't want to go to New England? You don't like New England because you don't like hard work. That's basically what it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hard work. I mean, and you hear the same thing over and over again, you know. I, I, I wasn't able to be myself. Like, hard work slash, hey, it is what it is, man. It's a cult. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a winning cult. It's a winning cult. Man. So now we're going to get into the Super Bowl uh, game. Mar um, uh, LaVon Marcus, I was about to call you Marcus. Marcus is supposed to be here with us today, but he's not. Um, we're going to get into the Super Bowl. Super Bowl minus three and a half. The Kansas City Chiefs are favorite on the road 
in Tampa Bay against the Tampa Bay Bucks. I want to get your feelings on it. I want to hear. I want you to vent. I want you to rant. Whatever you want to talk about. If there's even a prop bet that you like, please let me know. Because this is going to be the most bet game in the world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, this should be a a a a full of offense. I don't even know where word to to find for what's supposed to take place. It should be a game that's full of offense. Um, it's funny because it spreads three and a half. I'll touch on that for a second. And I remember not betting bet the game. I have a little pick em league with my friends against the spread. And this is the game before I get into props where the cheater just went off. So I mean, this guy the first quarter. Yeah, I, I mean, and I, I had because I had him in my little DraftKings lineup or whatever. He went off, and it seemed like man. The teams are killing these guys, but not, it the spread the spread I believe was three and a half as well, and the final score, if I'm not mistaken, I haven't looked at it since then. This has to be what seven weeks ago was 27 to 24, I believe. Right. So crazy as they were going off on these guys, you know, New England clawed back into the game and made it a close, solid game. So the spread makes sense. I, I did think it'd be a, a larger spread to be honest, but this is a Super Bowl, so. These, you know, these sharps up there in Vegas aren't stupid. Like, three and a half is, I guess, appropriate. I mean, I still like, you know, Chiefs to cover it. But um, this is going to be a very interesting game because, again, like I said, the table is set for Tom Brady. He's, it's a home game, right? So, of course, you're going to have a lot of Chiefs fans, Chiefs fans there. But this is Tom Brady, the GOAT, right? He's at home. And you got a solid team, right? You got, you got, some, you got some solid guys that can go after. Um, Mahomes, you know, Barrett, all them boys, right? That, that line is stacked. Don't get it twisted, right? Then, of course, you got a solid, you got it, you got some solid pieces on, on offense, right? You got Godwin, you got Evans, and Brady's going to be Brady, right? But of course, we cannot undermine the greatness and, and, and the athleticism of the, uh, of the other side, which is, you know, Mahomes, you know, you got the best quarterback in the league, Patrick Mahomes. You have the best tight end in the league, in Travis Kelsey. You have the fastest living human in the NFL in the cheetah. So it's almost like, bro, I got I got the, these three pieces right here, and these three pieces are better than any of your pieces, okay. unless you want to count Brady as a piece. But realistically, those are the top – those are the three best players on the field. So who's your pick? Kansas City minus three and a half? Uh, I, I, yeah, I have – I'm taking the three and a half. I'm taking the three and a half. I don't – I'm not confident uh, in it, right? Because Dan Brady's been so good, and it just makes sense, like – I can't like Tom Brady win another Super Bowl. Like I, I can't, I can't fathom it. Like again, again. I'm taking. Listen to me. I'm taking Kansas City first quarter, Kansas City first half, Kansas City spread, Kansas City money line, every way imaginable. Patrick Mahomes to win the MVP. There's going to be 22,000 fans at Raymond James Stadium, and you know what? The majority of them are going to go home crying because the Kansas City Chiefs, Travis Kelsey, freaking the Cheetah, uh, Matthews, all them boys, Chris Jones, Andy Reid, you know, Jones. Eric the enemy all of them boys are going to be enjoying a champagne shower full of freaking, you name it, Ace of Spade, Duce, whatever you want. All of it is going to be pouring and popping because the Kansas City Chiefs, and Chiefs Kingdom are going to win. And on a little side note, if you want, if you want, you could literally take the over as well. I don't bet over-unders. I never bet over-unders. You can never catch me betting over-unders. I am so confident this game goes over because most likely Kansas City is going to score 30 by themselves, in my opinion, and take and Patrick Mahomes to win the MVP. All back. They're going to have to keep airing the ball out, right? And they got and they got a good passing attack too. So I, I, I agree. Um, Mahomes... Man, I'm, I'm not going to get into this, but two Super Bowls, and he could just cruise, and, <laughs> boy, he's, he's bad. Yo, listen, he's a, I'm going to see it right. I'm telling you right now, State Farm is going to make a killing when Patrick Mahomes wins another Super Bowl, and he's going to be sitting there doing mad State Farm commercials. All first of all, first, first, first of all, let's get let's get to the real the, the real problem here. Aaron, um, Aaron Rodgers messed it up. State Farm <laughs> More than freaking, uh, what, what's been going on these last couple of weeks? These his hedge funds are all this crazy. <laughs> yo, they be, yo, I'm buying State Farm. Take to the moon, right? <laughs> to the moon with State Farm. If it was Rogers, can you imagine? Yo, they've been shooting commercials all this week. 
Forget Super Bowl prep. Yo, Mahomes, Rodgers, we got five commercials to shoot, and guess what? We're going to shoot them. We're going to edit them. Man, and air them. wasn't Aaron oh, Rodgers' fault, man. Sport. Can you imagine, bro? State Farm, I bet you State Farm was like, this. come on, Aaron, help us out, man. Yo, we'll pay your salary. Yo, if you win this game, your salary is paid for in just one, like, it's paid for. Like, can you, ma- Aaron, you messed it up. Aaron, you messed it up, man. <laughs> With beers around the city just chilling, country boy style, like, Man, we're both, we're both on the Kansas City Chiefs minus three and a half. I'm on them, slam them completely every way imaginable. First half, second half, first quarter, whatever you want to do, take the over if you want. I think the over ends up hitting as well. And Patrick Mahomes ends up winning the MVP. Uh, make sure you click like, subscribe on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. LeBron, I want you to enjoy the game. Get some barbecue wings or lemon peppered or garlic parmesan or whatever you mm-hmm. want. I know my wife and my daughter are trying to figure out what we're going to have. I just told them, look, I just want to be comatose on the couch and that's it. <laughs> so, LeBron, like- enjoy the game this weekend. I appreciate you coming on and I'll see you next week for next week's episode. Oh,